to seize the time. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Seize the Time Season 2. We're glad to have you back here, and I'm glad to have these wonderful cast of players here for another wonderful expedition into this wonderful world of ours. Uh, before we start our session, I think a little recap is in order, just to get everything squared away. So without further ado, if you spare me a little moment of your time, I'd like to go over what last happened. If you haven't known, our heroes for the story are as followed. Kimmy Seasinger, a spry and book smart scholar from the College of Zero. Lilipa, a fierce warrior awakened from a cryostasis sleep of over 2,000 years. Anaru, a royal knight on a quest to redeem himself after a terrible war. Maris, a life and death monk seeking answers for his order's transgressions. Miyoko, once, a, once part of a powerful family of casters, trying their best to escape their past. And Sebastian, once a slave, a pirate, and now an inventor, seeking a new life and purpose. Our story begins with an ending. Our heroes converged as mercenaries, explorers, and exiles, all looking for closure from their past. They found it aboard the sea-traveling vessel, the Pelosian Dream. However, it wasn't too long before fate itself diverged their intended paths towards a greater destiny. A powerful and violent storm emerged from the great beyond, ripping apart the ship before our hero's very eyes, just as they too were flung into the endless abyss of the ocean below. Our heroes would awaken on a strange, mythical island, seemingly uninjured. They came together, creating a makeshift alliance to find the other survivors and hopefully return back to civilization. On their journey through the island, they had their fortunes read by a strange bone caster, encountered otherworldly alien monstrosities, following them for unknown purposes, met friendly ancient elder lizards and turtle folk, and met a cunning scientist at the top of the volcano. All of this while fighting for their lives against the forces of evil, nature, and the beyond. Every ounce a blood, sweat, and tears they shed on this, this island coalesced into them earning an inner strength that would both bring them closer together and gain powers enough to change their fates, if they so choose. Taking a deal from the scientist named Nebulon to get themselves off the island and to save the lives of the elder races they met, the party um, ventured out back to the rest of the world to find these ancient Xenosian ruins, uh, the civilization that rose to the stars themselves, and bring these artifacts back to the scientist just in time before his perceived end of the world event would occur. After venturing out, the party would discover an ancient underwater elven city, pass through it a towering and impenetrable wall of wind, and would release a god from deep below on their first journey into one of these ruins. But what does this mean? Why didn't Nebulon speak of, or possibly know, that there was a god trapped down below in these ruins? As a warm looms in the region of Palos, between the ever-oppressive Federation, the Crusader underwater kingdom of Tethys, and the monarch-led Republic, alongside the uh, resurgence of strange demons named Akali, can there ever be a bloodless solution? to all of this rising chaos. Can all this be fixed by our group of heroes? Or is time truly fixed and a path set for them? Now they set off towards Locus Shell, a vast and expansive settlement occupied by the Federation. They hope there to find allies uh, to excavate more of those ruins for Nebulon and possibly make their names and fortunes in the arena, and other places within the city. All of this and more will be explored in Season 2 of Season Time. So, 
Let's get into it, shall we? So after a couple of days of travel from your uh, recent encounter on the shores of Cape Doakley, uh, it, it's it felt like an eternity uh, traveling those waters, deep oceans, uh, hoping that you would see sight of land soon. And it came to you, finally, after five days of travel. Uh, you see the rising uh, plateaus and mesas that are seen just from the coast of Ore, the island where Lacachelle resides. And as you come around the corner of the northern tip of Ore, the island, you start to see the vast settlement that is Lacachelle. It's rising cliff districts, uh, all varying in design and architecture. And of course, the most uh, noticeable sight is the giant towering steel-plated factory that sits just out that city, plummeting smoke and foul smells and polluting the waters around it. This vast factory stands in contrast to the rest of the beautiful uh, white marbled city that lays before you. However, as you do get closer uh, to this factory and the rest of the city, you can see one of the districts that lies closest to it bears a striking resemblance to the polluted waters and the factory itself. What was once a beautiful district along with its other parts of the city, uh, this district seems to decayed over time and bears scars from a battle not too far ago. And um, this factory stands way high in the air. It, you know, as the boat gets closer and closer, it starts to just tower over you menacingly, emitting uh, reddish glows that um, you can almost feel the heat from the distance. And you can start to smell all that sulfur and feel the oppressive gloom of it weighing on you. Uh, and as you get closer, you can see that the, uh, the factory itself protruding out of its, um, its ports. On, there's like four ports on each side of this factory. There are walls on the east and uh, uh, west side of this factory that extend out and kind of enrapture uh, the city. And you can see alongside uh, these walls, there are various ships that are docked there of Federation design, and you can see the banners of the Federation, the blue and gold uh, you know, flag flying proudly above these walls. And um, you are not too far where you can possibly decide if you want to find another way or just go right into the belly of the beast but you can see on these walls past the factory that there are entryways that you can get through towards the city itself but you will have to go past them or find another way into a locker shell so what would you like to do so we can go through this factory area, or we can find another route. Because, like, we're at the city, and we're just trying to find a parking space. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, you're, like, on the <laughs> outskirts of it. And the factory does stand a, a little bit out from the city. But you do see that the walls that extend out of the factory do in, enclose the city. So um, the only potentials is to find a place on the land itself around or outside of the walls or just go through the walls themselves. But yes, essentially. <laughs> and so uh, I guess who would be driving the boat right now? It's mm, a good question. Uh, you know, Larrick is doing his thing in the, um, in the ship, cooking up some meals and he definitely does not want to be seen. 
Dinky <laughs> is being kept in the uh, the brig for obvious reasons, and uh, name is just flying around, um, free as a bird, if you will. How many days have gone by? About five. Five days have passed. Uh, so I think Lilipa would be on the deck, but like she would already like just knowing that we're going into Federation territory. She are, she's already in disguise. <laughs> Her shitty little suit and mm -hmm. goggles. So she can either be driving or working the sails. That's what I guess it's like I'm just trying to figure out who, I, who's driving, so I can ask <laughs> what what we should do. <laughs> Naru would probably be sailing the ship. Okay. Naru. Yes. Um, I I think for the best, in case anything happens, we probably should not. Land in the port so we can make a quick getaway without having to worry about getting out these walls. I, I agree. Um, I I don't know the geography, the layout of this land, though. So I think finding a place to dock the ship might be difficult. Indeed. Um. Is Sebastian anywhere nearby? I don't know. I've been keeping an eye on the horizon. Uh, if I look around, do I see Sebastian or are you below deck? Um, did anybody say we were coming up to land? I figured we'd probably, somebody would probably have said something. I'd probably be making my way up to the deck then. Um, Downtown. Sebastian, do you think you can have 85 kind of scout a little bit to see if there's a spot for us to land? Um, it's a good question. I don't know if he's a navigator. Um, 85, um, do you know how to circumnavigate? The steel plated uh, bird uh, animatronic uh, leaps on Sebastian's shoulder and its glowing green eyes uh, glow a little bit more fiercely looking in uh, off the uh, the coast the lock of shell and says observation federation has a tight grip on this city and I imagine the surrounding areas it will be difficult to find a place but I will try. Um, Lilipa, you, you you wanted to say something. Um. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, she, uh, I, um, I think I could possibly help a little bit. Uh, hold on a second. I gotta get the character sheet open. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have a feature for this. <laughs> 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 the time has come. <laughs> it's here. <laughs> the second half. <laughs> so what Lilipa does spot is that uh, on the other side of the factory where uh, most of the city does not reside, but on the other side, in fact, um, the wall at the very edges of it seems to have crumbled and decayed and um you can actually see a spot in there and there's not actually a lot of federation occupying that area and you do see like a little tiny islands where you uh they have like a lot of trees and foliage that you look like you can circumvent and kind of stay hidden enough to get past this wall and you can see that it does land on like the coast of Laka Shell, and it also kind of opens up into that uh, decrypted kind of uh, district with all those um, uh, rundown buildings and etc. So, like, right, right around here, around this side. <laughs> so, 
85 goes, conclusion, my help is not necessary. <laughs> Thank you, 85. Uh, maybe next time. <laughs> well, now it looks like we have a place that we can dock. Are we worried at all that we might have been scouted already? That people have been watching us approach and they're just going to see us pass through this crack in the wall? I mean, if they do, the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to approach us anyways. This way, at least it's on our terms and not surrounded by their fortress. Okay. But, well, if it's uh, agreed upon, then the ship will move on. Uh, it starts to slowly, uh, at a, a um, safe pace, uh, drift along towards um, that opening in the wall. And the further you get towards this, uh, you could see that the uh, the Federation uh, occupying the walls get uh, less frequent. And this is a vast wall, you can see. It stretches for a couple of miles out. And the factory itself is quite large in diameter. And um, before you know it, the factory is still tall. Um, you know, it's not as uh, towering as it was before as you kind of get to the edges of this wall. And um, you can, as you kind of see, you can see like the coastline um, begin to appear. And you can see it's kind of like black ashen shore be more visualized in the green murky water kind of coasting off it. And... Um, a lot of hills that start to um, lead up to these kind of like jagged cliffs and, uh, and they kind of go further up uh, towards a bend where it starts to connect with the uh, the city walls proper. But you do see on the um, the south end of these this beach line is that district where there are no walls in this district. It's almost, it's vastly different than the rest of the city you saw from a glance. A lot of these buildings just look very old, outdated. And uh, actually, let me let me transfer you over to the map. Does anybody else have vision? Nope. nope. I gotta put tokens down. It's all right. <gasps> We're huge. You're giants. Can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Well, but I need you. Mm -hmm. These things can't contain us. This factory isn't that big, DM. <laughs> Only I'm like practically it. kaiju here. <laughs> Three Lilipas tall. <laughs> and, uh. Whoop. So you start uh, around this edge where it kind of um, goes up the cliff sides or goes lower into um, like, the district there. So like you can here? choose. Yeah, exactly. And the ship just kind of slowly drifts its way to the shore, and you guys find uh, good ways of uh, anchoring it. And you you can get off and get on your rowboats and go towards the shore proper, or you can plan some more things out. But uh, what would you guys like to do? Before we set ashore, I want to remind you all that some of us are wanted. Some of us are not supposed to be living. So please be careful who you talk to. 
I'm speaking of which, uh, will the princess be joining us on shore or will she be staying behind? I believe she will be staying behind. But it is not my decision to be made. Uh, she steps out and um, from the um, ship and um, you can see that she's wearing more commoner clothing rather than her, her bronze uh, chest plate and armor she was wearing at that battle and um, she says I have my ways I have contacts in the city that I need to get to and um, I will communicate with you all if you need me and um, she kind of steps around the mast and you see her change her appearance at a whim and she turns into a um, a dragonborn a uh, a white scaled dragonborn with uh, bright blue eyes, wearing kind of blue tunics that uh, strike a resemblance to um, the Federation. And she says, um, "If you need me, I'll be in the Court's Bluff district. Um, there's a benefactor there that I." That my deity has acquired through uh, devotion. His name is Mothia. Seek him out if you need me. And uh, Mothman, got it. <laughs> she just kind of deadpan looks at you. Anyway, and she jumps off the ship, <laughs> splashes in there. Uh, Larry calls out from the uh, inside the ship. I'm not coming out ever. Send me food, please. Larry, are there any supplies you would like us to procure for you? Something delicious and delectable. I heard the uh, Damia. She has a brewery here. One, one of the famous breweries. Some good drinks there. I I I think she could even help help find some uh, particular potions that could help you. Tell her Larix sent you, but not in the open, in private. She knows me. Very well, Damia. Well, Kimmy, um. If you were your father, where, where do you think you'd be? Um, Kimmy normally is very, you know, talkative and always talking over people and stuff, but she's very quiet and odd, odd, oddly uh, off-put by when you mention her father. And she goes, uh... Maybe it, maybe the tavern, maybe a brewery. I I don't really know. All right. Um. Well, then I, I um I don't want to make any decisions, but it sounds like our best bet might be going into town. What do you all think? I say we get this over with as fast as we can. Right, um, uh, so I'm going to look at the... Um, uh, is it like... Can I climb up a little bit to see both sides? Is that possible? Or Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to see like where I see people. If I'm seeing more like factory workers and you know, federation. And you know, outside, am I seeing more just like town folk? Yeah, as you get uh, closer to that uh, divide where it, mm. like it's starting to rise up to those cliffs, uh, you can see below as it stretches out a lot of tents, um, like um, hundreds of them, just kind of scattered throughout, and uh, and the uh, the buildings to the south of these tents are you really don't see any life, and uh, yeah, 
Like down here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. It, there's not a lot of there, uh, anything happening. And they look abandoned for the most part. But you do see quite a bit of people frequenting these tents. And the further up you go, though, it gets uh, progressively nicer. Uh, fertile lands, grass, a couple of trees. And um, you start to see um, up the hill uh, much nicer and um, elegant building designs. Um, and you actually do see uh, Valdra herself as a white dragonborn uh, walking up there. And kind of blending in and you see uh, quite a bit of crowds uh mingling it's not really crowds but it's like uh like a few groups there and a few groups there kind of sitting around at these little tables and uh just kind of watching over the cliff sides as you just kind of moseying around the trees and bends and catching glimpses and um you do see a little bit farther out too this vast giant building it's all interconnected and it has all these kind of curves and grooves to it and uh, kind of has a, a lot of elevated platforms and a kind of a dome structure in the middle. That's, uh, Wait, so we're not on the boat anymore? Nah, I imagine you guys were getting off. Well, I, I think Maris went off in, to look. I at least went off to just look. Um, but it looks like that's probably the better way to go. We'll be going uphill. It looks a little bit more high class. And we could probably get some information for some coin. Does your father typically play in the uh, pricier venues? Is he a high collar fellow or is he like. Uh... A man of the people and playing where the uh, populace lies. Jorex. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you're sorry. We repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> he was basically saying is like um your father more like uh panders to the the high class or the low class of the the people like does he play like uh you know for the the masses or does he play for the nobles oh i'm i'm sure he plays for both well if if you have any idea one way or the other which he might be more um in tune with we could start there we could look in the uh the lower class area here just off this uh docking point or we could go bump elbows with the nobles and hope we find him there i probably should ask lyric before we left mm -hmm. i uh <clears throat> Let me let me try something, and he pulls out a conch shell, and mm -hmm. and <laughs> sends a message to Leric. Leric, do you happen to know if we could find Kimmy's father in the upper class or lower class areas? Oh, the what? Where did you get this? It's. It's my shell phone. It's <laughs> my, my carrier is C no, C mobile. Okay, in the show, everybody go home. <laughs> uh, he he replies. Um, from what I remember by the scroll, he seems to be playing at the tournament. I imagine you'd probably find him in some high, highly protected establishment. I don't think he would be playing in the in the housing districts. So maybe the, the tournament halls. Xenos' glory is the the tournament center. Though Atarian spas are quite glorious. He may be hanging there, getting a spa or two. If only I could go. Perfect. Thank you. We will start our search there. Uh, we could possibly find him in the uh, tournament or at the spas. 
Let's, <clears throat> let, let's just go then. I am. And, like, she, like, pulls at the suit a little. She's like, it is very hot inside this thing. <laughs> and I would like to go somewhere where it is. there is no sun. <laughs> So you have two avenues to go through. You can go through the the poor slums district of Snake's Vice, or go uphill through Quartz Bluff, Noble District, to get to these two locations. What do our um, what do our outfits look like, Michael? Oh uh, well, if you got commoner clothes, then you can just dress as a casual person, or if you want to stroll through, you know, the city heavily armored with weapons strapped to you, and that's your prerogative. I do, I, I do imagine you guys all are wearing your armor for obvious reasons. I mean, my armor looks casual, so, you know. What if we have unarmored defense? <laughs> then you're good. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. And you look like a barbarian, and nobody wants to fuck with you. Exactly right. I'm 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 wearing a the, a gimp suit right now, guys. Let's just yeah, but they're like you're the buffest gimp I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I am a child, <laughs> as far as anybody knows, a very sick, sick child. <laughs> um. It, it just depends, like, how you are, what are you wearing, what are you, you're, you're wielding, and what kind of attention will that draw from those two areas? I, I think if we go as is right now, we should head straight to the tournament. We might fit in a little more closely to the clientele there, but if we go into the upper class areas where these spas are, we might draw unwanted looks, so just depends on you guys. I have ways of changing my looks as well. The princess taught me a few things. <laughs> Little Pud just flops over. She's like on the ground. She's like, please, let's just go. <laughs> like she looks up at the sun, like <laughs> it's bearing down on you. <laughs> I mean, do we need to get anything before actually going into the tournament? I think we should gather some information at least. See what people have been saying about the Senate. Maybe get some health potions and other provisions. Yeah, health potions would be pretty good. So, they must be agreed upon which path you will take. Will you go through the Quartz Bluff Noble District? Or will you travel through Snake's Vice District to get to your locations? I'm more in support of going through Snake's Vice. Of course you are. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> there might be snakes, you know. I, I did not ask that. I was more so saying because we probably can get away with more tomfoolery there than walking up into yep. the noble district because we'll probably I, I i would bet gold that we would get in there and something would happen and then i'm like oh my oh you, you don't belong here <laughs> yeah I, i'm uh down with snake spice okay michael hey hmm? oh are there, any, are there any snakes there oh my god in the name yes <laughs> i'll take it the snakes are people. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hey, Morris. Yes. Roll me a, a DC 10 perception check. Oh, yeah. Also, yeah. Did I ever get my 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 merch that I paid for? That's a good. That's another good question. Well, that's not what I was doing. But I hope you did because I mean, worth worth a lot of money. <laughs> I don't think I ever received that, but that's fine. We'll deal with that in a second. Um. To perception, yeah. Just a DC ten, or just like yeah. a regular thing? Yeah, just roll it. Just roll it. All right, you realize that Miyoko's not with you, and you never woke her up. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs> um, before we head off this 
One little thing we need to do. I'll be right back. Uh, I'll go on the ship. Wait, why don't you just have an Aru call her on his uh, shell phone? I have a feeling that if we don't go and get Miyoko, she will not stare. <laughs> so I'll get on the ship. I'll go down to your door. Knock on your door. Do you open it? <laughs> uh, yes. She looks terribly disheveled and her eyes are all bloodshot. What is it? <laughs> are you all right? Never you mind. Are we there yet? Yeah, we're here. Are you going to be okay? I'm fine. You don't... Th part I of shove a... Uh, I don't remember what you bought, but I shove a cloak into your hand. Thank you. Um, um, thank you for picking this up. Uh, here, I'm just gonna... You just... You just have a lot on you. There's a lot going on. I'd say go wash your face. Meet us outside. Why? What's wrong with it? <laughs> and I just walk away. I just walk away and I go back outside. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. The item uh, gives you a nice cloak, sparkling glitter upon it. Uh, it almost kind of looks translucent when you hold it in your hands. A beautiful, beautiful item. I'm going to put it on. Mm -hmm. You kind of almost blend in with the uh, the ship itself. Just for a little bit. It's well made. I appreciate the efforts that you went through to get this. <laughs> There's Perfect. some traces of blood on there. <laughs> <laughs> and bear fur. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like the idea that you guys see Miyoko and just Mars's head walk up the stairs. <laughs> What the? F <laughs> all right, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Why are we parked all the way out here? We don't want to yeah, I felt that, that it was more inconspicuous. All right, mm -hmm. that makes it sound like you're going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's early in the day. You never know. All right. So as you all leave off the ship, um, you uh, see above you the clear skies, no clouds, sun beaming down on you as you make your way down below into these... Um, ashen shoreline um, and further down you start to get uh, closer and closer to this um, whole group of uh, tents of various sizes and scores of people just kind of rummaging um, sitting around fires uh, going in and out of the, the tents watching a, uh, you all approach a few of the kids uh start to run up and kind of look at you a little bit closer, you know, uh, muttering and whispering to themselves and laughing. And um, you kind of look, look up at these buildings that aren't too far away from the tents themselves. And um, you can see it. It, could, it can house all of these people. But um, you can see all the, the windows are boarded shut. And um, it's all decayed, nearly. You're pretty surprised, like, this. these buildings are held together as you get closer and closer. Hey, Michael. Yeah, what's up? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do I see the children? Yeah. I... Okay. Can you <laughs> tell me, what do the children tell them, say? Uh, they are saying to um, themselves that um, they see a fellow child wearing very funny looking goggles and wondering <laughs> why are they hanging out with uh, a band of crazed looking armed men and um, they're also saying like uh, oh, are there going to be another group of adventurers that go into uh, 
these buildings? No, no, no. I don't think so. No, I think they're just going past. Are they going to go into the pits? Yeah, that's a little bit of what they say. They kind of continue just kind of, you know, fawning over, like, the equipment and stuff you guys are wielding and, you know, all the clothing styles you're, you're sporting. And that's about it. And I think I think when they see you guys approaching closer and closer, they start to like fan out, start spreading through the tents, a little intimidated. And no, I'm not gonna mess with the kid. No, <laughs> I'll keep walking. <laughs> he was thinking about it though. It was there. It was like. <clears throat> What what races does it look like are primarily living here? Uh, it's a, quite a variety. You got humans, you got half orcs, you got uh, you actually got some Goliaths, uh, tall, tall figures just kind of rummaging through. Uh, you do see a couple Dragonborn. It's just a whole slow. You even see Water Genasi and some Tritons too. It's just smack dab. Are there any um, chains or collars on any of the Tritons or Water Genasi? No, but you do a perception check for me. Yeah, I do one as well, looking at these. Uh, four. <laughs> yeah, you can do one, two, Maris. Uh, around their necks, though, they do have, uh, like, uh, markings, like, uh, from those collars. Actually, quite a lot of people have those markings on them. And around their wrists, too. Hmm. Interesting. Also, I'd be able to know, like, what, like, uh, I'm assuming it's like a melting pot, but are the Tritons primarily, like, Eastern Tritons or Western Tritons or Northern Tritons? Um, from what you can gather, these are Tazo, so Western Islanders. Like, they don't have any of the tattoos that would be from the Eastern side of Palos. Though you do feel, see, like, one out of, like, five of them do have some of the uh, Eastern tattoos that would signify that they're, you know, Yathu. But most of these people are Tazo, Western Islanders. Uh, one of one of them, in fact, a um, a water genasi comes up to the group and says, uh, 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 "Are you part of the the guild, the Guild of Blades?" You would no. think so, but no, we are a guild with blades, but no, uh, no correlation. So you're not here to help clear out the district? Uh, well, we haven't been made an offer yet. It just looks kind of defeated. That's unfortunate. I think they have any money. T tell me, friend, would this be a good thing if the district were cleared out? Oh, Definitely. What the Made out of what? Well, a little bit of everything. And he kind of scratches the back of his head and looks up at the top of the rooftops. Uh, the rooftops are filled with assassins and thieves. And inside the buildings themselves. And he kind of looks down at the ground and looks kind of like he's seen something. He just kind of spooked him. And he looks up and he says, I don't know what's in there. But I know people that have gone back into that district have not come back out. Only if you get permissions from the assassins themselves can somebody return. And I don't want to be a part of someone that associates with that, that group of murderers. 
I honestly thought you were going to say they are infested with like rats or like big bugs or something. Uh, <laughs> but there are some monsters in there too. It's just Oh god. I mean that's what's um That's what a few people say. Could just be rumors. I haven't gone there since you know we had to leave for reasons. I think you're better out here. <laughs> we make the best of it. That's true. And luckily, Crater's, uh, Crater's Bell does offer some jobs at the brewery and in the harbor there. But it's getting pretty dire. We need our homes back. Living in these tents is not enough. Look at me here, telling you all my problems. I'll let you go. But if you are not part of the guild, I suggest you do if you want to earn some coin. You all look like you could take care of their particular problems. Where might we find this guild? Well, you have to cross the waters just west of here. Toward Crater's Bell. It's a little bit more of a richer district. By no if means I'm... rich as, uh, you know, the Ark, the Archfell, or Quartz Bluff. But better here. If our business takes us in that direction, we will perhaps speak with the guild. But for now, we are just passing through. We do not wish to get involved in others' affairs at the moment. Before you leave, though, can you direct us to a, the nearby general store, please? He, he looks at you and goes, there's, we have, I mean, we have ration stores here. Most of our stores are now under the Thieves Guild. The rooftops. You'll have to make your way all the way south of our district towards the little markets on the coastline. If you want to get anything. Thank you. And I'm going to go shake his hand and put a gold coin in my palm. When I shake it, it. He looks down at it and he says, Bless me, Cain. Thank you, monk. He's like tearing up and kind of walks back to his tent, just sits down there and just kind of looks at it. You just gave that man like $12,000. <laughs> well, that man I'm is not... going to get stabbed real fast now. <laughs> well, you can... It's just one go to coin. I think it. I think it will do some good. I'm going to look up at the rooftop, like right now. I wanted to look at the, the rooftops also. Uh, the sun glaring down on you. You can, uh, sort of see the edges of the rooftops. Nobody's looking at you, you know, from what you can see. Um, you do what, what you would probably have to... Have... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'd probably have to climb up to get a better, uh, advantageous spot. Because these do go, go about, like, two to three stories high. Mm. Maybe when... we do not go shopping in the poorest part of the city. <laughs> When um, Lollipa looks up, um, she's using the goggles. Do they like pick up like? Cause they they pick up signatures right of people. Mm -hmm. Are they like picking up anything? Maybe like a, just a few like jittery blips. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, no, you don't see anybody on the rooftop. But as you lower it down, do a perception check for me. Oh boy. Little fish eyes back at it again. Mm -hmm. As these people get copper a month, and you just gave him like 13 years worth of money. 13. Well, it, it, it feels like the, the layers of walls there, you can't really see anything that is noticeable with your goggles. It's mostly the sun. You feel like the sun's kind of glaring off your goggles and kind of making it a little bit hard because you got to look up, see, and it kind of shines down and makes it 
Look back up at the sun. It's just like, <laughs> just like you can just hear her growling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate it here. <laughs> can I, from here on out, because how far, how far in, because we were over here, right? Yeah. How far in from here are we through these tents now? You're probably like, like um, right here. There. Yeah. Okay. From here to wherever we're going. I want to actively, like, watch behind us and around us to make sure we're not being watched more than just rubberneckers and the kids <laughs> and everything. Like, someone, like, just, I'm, I'm going on alert after the mention of, like, assassins and everything. You do notice that there are some, um, some particular individuals that have been following you uh and they they're kind of going they're kind of spread out too you but they do bear uh similar uh like bandanas and scarves and they're just kind of like glancing at you every now and then and then um they meant they they look like they're talking to like the populace but they're wearing bandanas over their mouths so you can try to roll a uh, perception check with your uh -huh. observant feet. See if you can see if they say anything in particular. Perception. Mm -hmm. 22. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're, they are saying you can see the mouth off something called rich and then gold. Hearing that, I, I I'm going to, like, are we walking actively? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, like, brisk walk up to, like, alongside Maris and, like, lean and actually, oh, no, actually, I'm going to use a cool new device I got. Um, he's going to hear his head. He's going to hear his head. He's going to hear his head. Going, I, I want to do that again um there's unwanting eyes that are aware of just us so i i understand the intent but just so we can make it through here and i don't want i don't want to be swiss cheese um you hear back uh very quietly should i make it seem like that man might have gotten more than I was intending on giving him. Um, I'm gonna message back and say, I don't, I don't think you should, but if you want me to, um, just see, just nears his head, just like nod, mm -hmm. just. So I'm, I'm gonna trail back some to the to the gentleman and i want to i want to see if i can do another cool thing uh can hey, just, i just before that miyoko mm -hmm. are you wanting to do something well, i was honestly going to do the same thing he was going to do but okay. probably a little different okay <laughs> i want i want to go up to the guy uh, where the fuck is it i looked at it before and i want to try to use this and basically make it clear that I'm trying to shake this guy down oh. I basically like get close to him like listen pal um, there was a misunderstanding um, that exchange did not go how it went and uh, you need to correct that right now uh, w w what are you saying I, I, I promise I won't I say anything and then I'm going to message him and tell him like <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this because there's people watching us I'm very sorry uh, he he begrudgingly gets it out of his pocket. I was gonna, I was gonna move to Crater's Bell, and <laughs> he's just like <laughs> sobbing as he hands you it, puts it in your hand. Oops, all right. You you better be, you jerk face. And then I'm just gonna. Uh... I, I'm very sorry. I don't I don't want to get stabbed though. <laughs> and then hurry to catch up, and also continue trying to keep an eye on the banditos or whoever they are 
uh as you kind of move away miyoko do you want to do anything as the uh... yeah i uh, now that i saw what he actually did where he just bullied a poor man <laughs> <laughs> and i sat that it was the bad one uh i'm going to mosey up oh. to him and i'm going to take out two silver and i'm going to give him one silver and say mm -hmm. give him both silver and say put one in your sock they are going to come over they're going to ask you uh how much we gave you you are going to show them the silver and they are going to take this way you get the silver out of this and then i'll leave do, do a sneak okay. do a sneak roll a good a good old sneak roll mm -hmm. i don't know poorly <laughs> uh. you can't see stealth there we go uh, bazinga <laughs> Okay, one second. So yeah, you uh, kind of lean over him every after he's just kind of sat down, defeated, and uh, you kind of give that intimidating presence from afar, managing to <laughs> slip that silver uh, onto the the poor water genasi, and uh, mention that to him. And uh, as you walk away, uh, you can you turn back. And uh, you see uh, one of the ruffians kind of crouch down. And uh, you can see them exchanging some words with each other. And this guy looks terrified. <laughs> I'm going to start walking quicker with everyone. <laughs> and kind of like walk up behind them and try to like corral people to be like, we need to go. We need to go right now. I don't know. Yeah, do I see them talking amongst themselves? The ruffians? Uh, they, th there's only one that like uh, crouched down with that uh, water genasi and started whispering to him. But you could see the... Um, yeah, because that's Sebastian points them out. And um, you start to see them. Okay. Uh, but they're, ne they're never together at one point. Uh, they're always going to spread out. I'll do something here. So on the biggest gathering of them, however many there are, I'm going to Oh boy, this is big. Well. Is it in the chat? Mm-hmm. Fog cloud. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna cast fog cloud at their feet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to cast message. And um in the, the most menacing voice, I suggest you turn and leave this place now if you value your lives. <laughs> Do an intimidation with advantage. Funny part is this message only hits one person at a time, so you had to repeat it for like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> 17. You can hear the uh, unsheathing of blades <laughs> and um, as the fog cloud uh, emanates from you. But then um, they hear Oh, I, I'm at them, like around them, around okay. their feet. Wow. Okay. So yeah, as it kind of emerges from their feet, they kind of get startled, draw their blades out and kind of look around. And then one of them um, gets that message in their head and he goes like, oh, it's good to me the spice and crack it out and he starts like slashing around people and um a couple of the, the bandits kind of like look uh look around trying to look for whoever sent that message and, and one of them actually goes over to the guy that's like like freaking out they're like what, what's going on what's what's going on he's like I, I i heard a voice again it's like you have to stay away from the pits you idiot and then looks around, tries to see if he can spot anybody uh, spellcaster resembling. So, you guys want to stick around, or you guys want to bounce out? Where I'm, out I'm, there. I'm still walking. <laughs> okay. Everybody rolls stealth I'm all about these guys. And I put my hood up. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. All right. With advantage for you. <laughs> Cammy, uh, little part, you guys want to do anything in particular before you do the stealth check? No, <laughs> I kind of imagine Lilith and Kimmy are just standing there watching everybody just 
fucking around with all these people and just going like, why? <laughs> what are we doing? Mm -hmm. Lopa just wants like, air conditioning. <laughs> it's somebody smell. Air conditioning? <laughs> Do I smell fish sticks? <laughs> Is there fried fish in the sun? <laughs> just trying to figure it out. It won't let me uh, roll initiative. What? No, 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 stealth checks. Oh, stealth checks? Well. Oh, Kimmy. Blended in. Uh, so you all managed to uh, blend in with the, the crowds there. And before you know it, the uh, these ruffians are long gone from your sights. And uh, before you know it, you're pretty much on the edge of this district and you can see like it starts to slope down and the waters below uh it's 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 a pretty wide uh channel that you see before you and lots of ships are going back and forth and these ships um look a little different uh than uh, like a trader vessel or a federation ships but these ships are just like multicolored um banners and flags and um lots of people on there just cheering uh popping fireworks in the air in in the daytime and they're all kind of heading up the channel uh and as you look you could see in clear view uh imagine like a coliseum but it's inverted upside down and uh giant uh stadium that has this sphere at the bottom of it and um uh, and you see all these ships are just parked around this sphere and you can see like there's like spiraling staircases that lead up into this kind of like coliseum and uh you, you see the scores of ships passing through this large channel this channel probably goes out probably like uh uh say probably like uh a mile out But you can like see who... before the channel uh, comes up that there is like a little slope that you can go up to that will lead to the next like cliff, like a uh, platform or level. Does it look like there are people in this district who like get paid to like ferry people over to the other district that we could like hire? Mm hmm. Uh, do a do a perception check or an investigation. Uh, what am I bet all right? Uh. Oop. You ask around and <laughs> um, you try to scout for possible sightings of this, and uh, no, nobody's talking. Or they're just kind of walking past you like, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I guess we walk then. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So you guys walk up the edge of this district, following up to kind of a clear uh, plain of this uh this cliff and you start to see the uh the curved uh giant uh dome shaped uh building that um has been pointed out is the uh the spas and you can actually see like lots of vegetation beautiful flowers and trees just kind of strewn all across this um this establishment lots of people from the east are just flowing into this place and um you don't you don't spot any uh federation as far as you can see and um to the west you can start to see uh lots of taller trees and uh, more walled structures they have these blue domes and golden dome buildings that uh, bear a striking resemblance to wizard towers from what you've seen.
And of course, the Coliseum is to your southwest. So, uh, so where will we be going again? Do we do the spas, or do we go to the tournament first, Kimmy? Uh, she just kind of stands there, and she's like, uh, and she looks at little Buh, like, for an answer. <laughs> she just, like, uh, looks over at the Coliseum. See, it's like, big building, has shade. She's just like, that one, please. <laughs> Right. It's in the Coliseum. Oh dear. <laughs> you do see around the north side of the Coliseum that there is like a um, steel platform staircase that connects to it. Uh, you do see a few people frequenting and going down and up to it. So you can take that or you can drop down below, swim your way up uh, to the port section of the Coliseum or... You could try to jump across, latch onto the Coliseum. Just whatever you guys decide. I think we just come in front. <laughs> we look like we could participate, so. so okay. I think I think the front door is the best way of going about it. Okay. I'm assuming the people who are going in look markedly more like more like richer than the people we were just Without a doubt. Yeah, they're wearing like bright reds and blues, like silks, and all sorts of high fashion designs. Um, all mingling, laughing. Total contrast to what you were just in. You should, As you you should find somebody gold in this district, Maris. <laughs> I'll throw up at you. How dare you! <laughs> and as you get to that uh, bridge, um, you know, some of the nobles kind of like look look at you uh, with a puzzled look. Some of them uh, whispering, uh, kind of have their hands like that. A few of them are just openly saying, like, why are they using this entrance? Oh, they're new, obviously. But are they going to try to participate? Um, I'm going to just make, I, I'm going to like stop walking and make eye contact with one of them. For like a like a just making it very clear that I hear what they're saying and then keep walking, but like oh. walking with an elegant like kind of swagger to it, you know, just kind of intimidating, trying to look like I belong. Mm -hmm. You're like okay. <laughs> they start to notice your mask and like a Talon of Cain member. What is he doing by himself? Wasn't he with the others? And um, as you kind of walk down, um, everybody's just giving you side eyes and glances as you make your way. And you can start to hear the, the thunderous uh, applause and cheerings of the crowds coming closer and closer as you get to the, the opening archway of the Grand Coliseum, where I, um, a couple of Federation guards and a... Um, a ticket master of sorts sits in his um, protected uh, dome little office uh, awaits you. And before we continue, though, we're going to take our first break. Hey. <laughs> so we're going to take our first five, uh, 15 minute break. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue with part two. Let's seize the time. We'll see you then. Oh, hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to uh, part two <laughs> of our session tonight. Uh, we last left off with our party uh, deciding to just go uh, smack dab right into the belly of the beast, the Coliseum itself, and to see if they can find uh, Mr. Olani Seasinger within the confines of it. Uh, so, yeah, you have come up uh, to the grand entrance. There are no giant doors waiting for you. It's just a giant uh, arch that kind of is connected to the vast uh, inverted Coliseum dome structure before you. Um, it, it, you look up and it is uh, massive in height. Uh, kind of gives you a little nauseated looking at 
from this angle. And as you kind of you know look back down level, you can see that little dome uh, protective shell uh, with a little podium and seat and uh, this goblin uh, dressed up in a very uh, sooty outfit with some glasses uh, flanked by some Federation guards is um, letting in people. You can see um, that there is like a little opening in the uh, little cube that he's in and that he exchanges tickets out. And there's probably like uh, eight people ahead of you right now. But they do seem to be going rather quickly. Do you guys want to do anything in preparation or do you want to get in line or what's the deal? We, when, when we get up there, just ask them what time your father is p performing. Uh, okay. I mean, are you, are you all right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amy, do you have a bad relationship with your father? What? No. I love my father, and he loves me. Oh, look, there he is. He's right over there. Where? Where? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what your dad looks like. Mm -hmm. Oh. Probably like her, but with longer hair. <laughs> oh. With the eyes and the nose. And the face. <laughs> and the big gotcha. chest. What if he doesn't <laughs> recognize me? He's a terrible father. <laughs> Kim Kimmy. You will be okay. I promise. <laughs> she did it. Even if he does not recognize you, it'll be fine. <laughs> she just nods and grips her hand and be like, Okay, I'm ready. Uh, eventually you do get to the Ticketmaster. The uh, the goblin arches his eyebrow and, and speaks up and says, uh, You do not look like residents of Court's Bluff. And you do not look like you are the rabble from Snake's Vice. Just who exactly are you? We are uh, tourists. A tourist here. And it looks like the Federation Guard laughs at him. <laughs> They're visiting Locker's Shell. There's a big Coliseum. <laughs> I suppose so. You're correct. Well, well what, what event are you here for? Yeah, there's a great uh, riding tourney today. There's also some performances being held. I That's what Anaru you... like elbows Kimmy like. Ugh, uh oh uh, <clears throat> um performances yes uh is uh the great Olani performing? He is, but not today. The tournament is not even. The grand tournament is not even on officially until. The first of next month. In three days. <clears throat> uh, uh, can we get an appearance with the great Olani? Your connections? You have any paperwork that says you have any approval by High Federation officials or the guild or some nobility? I have a birth certificate. Do you? <laughs> right. Yeah, everybody <laughs> carries those around, right? <laughs> no, Kimmy. No, they don't. That's just... not the president. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many times we've had someone say they're related to Alani C. Singer just to get backstage pass to see him? Nice try. Oh, wait! I, I do have proof! And then she uh, gets out her kalimba instrument, and she uh, shows, like, his, his, like, insignia on the back. Like, see? He gave this to me! He, he like, looks at it very closely. Um, I see a forgery when I see one. Fake! Are you kidding me?! He's my father, and I haven't seen him in a couple of years, but I'd like to see him now, if you don't mind. 
must is inquire it... as to what how high that the uh, perception roll really was. <laughs> no, From no. your dice. <laughs> um, Kami, roll a persuasion check for me. Not intimidation. <laughs> you can do intimidation if you want. You feel like you're really channeling that Kimmy Yangi energy. <laughs> I'm not as good. She's found one of the few people shorter than hers, so this should work. <laughs> yeah. They're both just like dagger eyes. <laughs> Your pimp squeak. <laughs> squeak a thon. <laughs> um, he looks at you for a while and says, You do. You are bearing a striking resemblance to him. And he <laughs> gets out like a, um, like a scroll and like puts it up against the glass and says, Yes, this one is his daughter. It's just Doodle Bob on the other screen. <laughs> Unfortunately, he is not here at this current time. He is in Ateron Spas. Of course he is. However, <laughs> if you would like to register as attorney participant, you could do so now before the sign up goes up. The entry fee and what is the payout? Entry fee. Oh. Is that the sound? Uh oh, the cameras are all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we all Entry knew it. I... Entry fee is a thousand. Pay is ten thousand. A thousand copper. Thousand gold. Per person. You're supposed to be financed by a guild. You know, we don't just let anyone enter the tournament. Is it like a groups or is it one on one? It's groups. Okay. Um, how long do we have to register? Three days. Um, I'll turn away from him and make, like tell the group to move back a little bit so we can talk a little bit. Yeah, let's get out of line. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, we should probably go find that. What the the Guild of Blades? Maybe they can. If we help with the eradication problem, the infestation problem, maybe they'll back us. You, you hear a noble actually... scoff at you and go, "Ha! Huh, the Guild of Blades." Please. You have very strong ears, and I, I advise you to keep them to yourself. Why would you bother with those blade bogus fools? <laughs> Come to the Arcana Halls. Mages could use your work in there. What do you we offer? Get... We offer you a sponsorship. That's not and... enough. What? <laughs> Nice. <laughs> of course, some spellcraft and what have you. We have access to much knowledge there. Do you just offer this to anybody in the line? Uh, ones that are sporting guns and weapons like yourselves, yes. You don't hide it very well. This one's a monk and this one's a Tethian from the looks of them. I don't see why you have a child with you, though. You you leave my child alone, <laughs> sir. Uh, Michael, I would like to ask the goblin uh, before we leave. I'm just gonna be like, is that is there like a, a roster of the uh, of the like teams that there are the in the tourneys that will be posted soon? Oh yeah, of course. There. Um... Let me get it for you. And he prints out. Uh... He doesn't print out. He gets it out. <laughs> uh, and he hands you the scroll. It kind of shimmies it out, the little slide, the opening. And a message. And... Can message me? I could add something. Like, just uh, get, get limitations also. Like, what are, mm -hmm. what, what's their hard nose? <laughs> what the fuck are you saying? What they, what they don't allow in the tournament. That's our one for the whole season, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. He'll ask you. You ask him. I don't know what you're saying. I'll come up the counter. Hey, <laughs> what, 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 what don't you allow to happen in the tournament? Uh, no um, harmful spell casting. 
no um, engineered things that could affect other teams. <laughs> Just anything harmful to the other team. You can do as much as you can to buff your party, but... But these, the these, these, these tournaments aren't like martial tournaments. Well, there is this, the Steam Ball tournament is on the first. That is the main attraction. Hmm. And we'll go back to everybody else and huddle. This is not what I planned on. I thought we were going to come in here and just attack people, but um. What, what kind of tournament are we having? It's it's like some like, um, it's a lot of athletics. Uh, What's this, the Olympics? Yeah, that's a yeah, tri no, triathlon. Uh, <laughs> well, I've never well, well, heard of steamball before. Uh, everybody can do history checks. Well, of course, it's like have none nice. of have none of you ever fought in an arena before. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, little but you can roll with advantage. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm 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 fairly probably similar to something in our arena, but it was more like two people enter, one person leaves. <laughs> Close the thing with, Hold on. Oh, oh, nice. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Plus zero for good measure. Uh, <laughs> during your times, Lupa, in uh, Zeratrinske, you have actually met a few Steamball players. Uh, there is one named Axis. Um, he is a uh, half-orc, brutish figure. Um, he played for Zeratrin Skate team. It, it's basically like uh, regional with a few uh, outliers from the old world that come together and play this... Uh, in the water sports, uh, basically, it's kind of like a three-dimensional sport with uh, several goals at different parts of the sphere that you uh, have to score in. What I've known about it, too, since it's Zeratin's Gate. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, Miyoko, Kimmy, Sebastian, Hanaru. All have known about it in some way, shapes, forms. It's just... Lilipa here has a little bit more of a detailed understanding of the, the game mechanics, so to speak. Like, you know the penalties, you know the red flags, the... <laughs> One time I was the ball, not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a train, you know, you can just curl up you know, for a little bit. <laughs> the opening ceremonies are always the best, though. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be like, uh, you know, like, uh, if one was interested in gambling a little bit? Is there going to be, like, you know, odds for each team? The, the goblin sh shakes his head enthusiastically. Yes! Yeah, that's that's where we get most of our funding. A lot of benefactors put a lot of money in on these teams. Ooh, I'm excited. <laughs> one of the nobles is like, uh, can I buy my ticket, please? And the goblin's like, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, shoo off! You're not going to buy anything, go! Well, to the spas. As you look at the list, Miyoko, you can see um, a couple city names. Zeratin's Gate, uh, City of Ilo, um, Thalia, a few Thalia names, uh, Old World Cities, and um, there's uh, Cape Doku, and um, Kenode, Silverloss. So they got a little bit of everybody participating. From my history check, do I know who won last year? With your history check, do you... Let me try to get the actual... What is your history check? Everything's been privately rolled. Oh, all right, Yeah, 25. buddy. <laughs> the viewers at home are wondering. Oh, mm -hmm. no. It was the same thing that you rolled, basically. A 10? No, a 25. I was talking to Kimmy. Oh, I've only seen the closest thing to a tournament I've seen is monks getting beat up. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, while I find this information, you guys can talk amongst yourselves for a little bit. 
this okay. even why we're here? <laughs> Should we just find her father and get on with it? What, you don't want to, you know, like, put a little money on the games? Ooh, feels that right? We feel like putting ourselves on the center stage when many of us should not be in the light of day would I'd be not. detrimental to our health. I'm not playing Steve Ball. I'm going to bet on it. <laughs> I mean, getting money would be beneficiary. I just don't know how that would work with I mean, I guess that, I guess the gills would fall under if we were specifically looking to enter. Yeah, I think if you want to enter, you have to, like, uh, get a sponsorship and then they pay your ticket in. But then they probably get a oh, big cut of the money. I bet we could get one through my dad, maybe. Does he run a guild? I don't know. No, that's what they were saying, is that it's all guild dependent, that... They're the the main sponsors. But I bet he knows. But I bet he knows g other guild leaders, or he can introduce us to some. Surely, I mean, he's pretty famous. Okay, okay. So uh, the names are uh, the Swamp Sweaters uh, from the Apranu Coalition, uh, the Hanodi Haversacks, <laughs> the Royals. Which is Lock a Shell. Uh, the Talons, or a bunch of um, Talon of Cain monks from Silverloss. And the Persian Scurvies from Elmarak. And Raelian Blades uh, from Raelia. And the ones that won last year were the Raelian Blades. And uh, they're pretty, like, meathead, big, uh, impressive team. There is a sports team made up of monks who have been trained in martial arts. Now I have seen everything. Well, don't you... You have to be pretty athletic to be a monk. To be don't you have to be like... Well, you're of, a monk. Balanced of soul and mind and <laughs> do religion, anything. How's you? How can you be balanced of soul and mind if you don't train your body, Yoko? And then go to an arena and kick a ball around so that rich men can gamble on you. It's not about the gambling per se. It's about showing our strength as a guild. Why am I arguing with you? You <laughs> should be very versed in this with a dojo. Yeah, I, I go to, I do dojos to learn to use the sword, not go to church. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the names down. You guys can um, pay Sebastian your admission. Oh, yes, yeah, Sebastian. What's up? Uh, I want to slowly slink away from the group mm -hmm. and find like a little hidey hole. Mm -hmm. And I want to. I don't. I don't know how to do it because last time I didn't control it, but. Last time I was on the ship when we had the Omni drones, mm -hmm. you had um, Nebulon contact me. Okay. And I want to try to see if I can contact him back because I want to clarify because he mentioned about this tournament. I want to get clarification on what specifically he wanted done relating to this tournament. Okay. Uh, so uh, a little bit of tinkering kind of smack it a few times with your wrench and uh, the projector eye starts to flicker and uh, projecting itself um, on the ground you, you kind of find like a little corner and it opens up into this kind of like uh, network of like cogs and pipes underneath this bridge that you kind of sneak into and, that, and that's where this projector uh, you uh, perform it at and you see a little bit of static and uh, eventually uh, Nebulon's head comes into shape and um, he says um, um, where exactly are you? 
Uh, we're we're in, in the place to be. We're in um, like a shell, like you said. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, you're inside the city already. Yeah. No. You didn't get detected by Federation forces. Not that we know of. Good. Well, have you signed up for the tournament? Um, that's that's the thing I was calling about. Um, what specifically did you want us to sign up the tournament for? Because I was under the impression it was like a melee, but now speaking to the one admission officer, he's saying it's more of a more like a Olympic style multi event thingamabob. I have been gone from there for quite some time. My contact obviously didn't update me on the change of pace or what tournament is going on there. I think he's a little too a little bit too preoccupied with his uh little escapades and the pits. The pits. Speaking, speaking of which my contact his name and uh, you get a uh, message in your mind one moment is Cestra Cestra can you spell that please S or C E S T R A. And you said he's in the pits. He's a gnome. Ask for his name. I know the rooftops at night are. Filled with assassins and thieves, but if you can use your thieves' cant to speak his name to them, they will know that you are one of his allies and take you to him. He can give you proper admittance into the tourney, of course, by doing a favor of his, no doubt. You'll need to see if you're. Worth the price. And then what? after Sorry. entering, like what what do you want to specifically do in the turn? Just compete or I mean it's, I only recommend it for you to make some money. Okay. I don't know if there was like a specific thing you wanted done. Well, if you can find a way to um get into the high nobility and bug them for me. So I can hear the little conversations. Wouldn't be too much against it. I'm curious to see what these uh, Lucka Shell nobility have been up to since my absence. Alright, well, I do appreciate the, the tip and I will see what is most beneficial for us because there are a couple different avenues and I don't want to burn any bridges but uh, see what I can do and I'll be back in touch at some point or you'll be in touch with me I don't know we will need to discuss your last venture into the ruins I need updates but it seems you're in a a place where that is not really the safest to discuss. Find a place to settle in the pits or some local tavern. There's quite a few of them in Lock Shelf, from what I recall. Just find a place to settle down and use this again to contact me. Alrighty. Over and out, and the light flickers off. And for... Oh, fucking ass. 
<laughs> and you climb back up, join the rest of the party. And now, party, where would you like to go? Well, does anybody have any idea what we should do? Right now, I feel like maybe going to talk to those blades might be the best decision. <clears throat> I want to go talk to my father. I yeah, mean, isn't Kimmy's father like right over there? I mean, not everybody has to come with me, but um, but I'd like to get it over with if possible. We have nothing better to do. I think we should go see a father then. Okay. Kimmy, lead the way. <laughs> lead the way, Kimmy. <laughs> Uh, okay. She just starts walking in a direction. <laughs> Walks back to the boat. All right, we're there. <laughs> we did I it. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. So you guys walk across the uh, the slope and eventually, uh, or uh, out of the bridge, across the plains towards the uh, this giant spa location, and. Um, you come around um, the bend of the walls, and you can see it starts to open up into this wide, um, wide area of like uh, fountains and uh, little groves, and you see people just kind of laying out in the sun, basking in it. Uh, some people in this kind of like long, kind of like Olympic pool, just kind of swimming around. Um, no, no federation, but you do see some uh, guards there. They're donning these kind of like uh, bright purple. Uh, chain mails and scabbards, and they're just kind of like looking around, you know, scouting the area. And as you kind of walk into this uh, opening, you you get all this rich aromas of like perfume and um, sweet smells, and uh, you feel a little lightheaded for sure, just being in this area full of um, decadence and lovely lovely people and scenery as you kind of come to uh the uh the the building's entrance pro uh proper you can see um guards taking notice of you and start to converge at the entrance and um a couple of the guards look at you as you approach and they say um what business do you have with Tyrion spas you look like a band of mercenaries to me. I will. Uh, that would be correct, all except for one, and I push Kimmy forward. Ah. Uh, hi. <clears throat> Hello. I would like to see the great Olani. Olani isn't seeing anyone. <clears throat> um, I am his daughter. The guards look at each other. We've heard that one before. Look, I'm his daughter. This is the insignia. This is the kalimba he bought me. I have a birth certificate in my bag. I've already been through this with one person. I am not going through this with another person. Yeah, did we see the uh, the scroll that that goblin had with Olani's face on it? Or was he just kind of looking at it himself? Yeah, he was kind of looking at it himself. I'm going to... Uh use my mimicry to repeat exactly what the goblin said when he found out that Kimmy was <laughs> was oh yeah you are his daughter <laughs> <laughs> and um, the guards just look at each other in, in bewilderment he, he has a daughter that's wild well uh, go in there he's I'm assuming he's in the far back of the spa area uh, probably with a teary on himself um, he's not, and she, like, kind of leans in, like, he's not, like, naked, is he? I, I just, I just want to ask. We were not paid enough to find that out. Uh, <laughs> in the... I just really don't want to deal with that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guards just nod and let you pass, and, uh, as you enter this, you can see, like, this room opens up d dimly lit you know um kind of red red padded walls you know furniture 
you know, like little, um, you know, ottomans and low end seats and everybody just kind of sitting around hookahs and lots of smoke filling the air. Uh, there are some kind of spas too, as people just kind of sit around lazily. And uh, some of them actually start to like get up worriedly seeing you all kind of move in. But uh, as you move past them, they kind of stop and just relax back in there. But you see a whole uh, slew of fine uh, jewels and stuff, decadence and uh, baubles just uh, lining up the walls and uh, some of the, uh, excuse me. But yeah, you just see, it's just a, a beautiful uh, laced and lined room. And um, it's more like a, like a grand hall. But as you kind of make your way past all these uh, people, um, you get into the, uh, like these uh, double wide doors that opened up. And um, you could see that uh, there's this like long giant, uh, long table. Uh, lots of people are sitting around eating a huge banquet of food as servants go around. And... Um, Really, you just see like food, jewels, uh, people just hanging around, s smoking, or um, just hanging out in the spa baths. Uh, why don't you guys do an investigation roll for me? See if you can find Miss Olani. Everybody. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Never mind. Maris with his special no, eyes. No, no. <laughs> 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 so yeah you uh, lead up uh it kind of goes outside again into this um uh, just kind of like a circular dome shaped tower and uh you can see um that a few figures are walking inside of it and uh, you can see it kind of has a um, similar uh, man that has like a similar complexion to uh kimmy and uh brown curly hair like her going inside with this short little um kind of chubby halfling figure in this uh really fine raiment clothing and little curved shoes going inside and you can hear them talking with each other and I'm, uh mm -hmm. i'm gonna bend down to kimmy and put a patch on the back he's right over there kimmy you're gonna be fine. We're right with you. I'll point him out to her. She just kind of freezes in place, and she's she's still gripping Lilith's hand. She hasn't let go, um, and now she's like fucking death gripping it, <laughs> which is like like a fly landing on Lilith, <laughs> <laughs> which is nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um. Well, fucking like, but she can feel it, <laughs> obviously. And she, um, uh, just, uh, she looks up at you, Kimmy, and just goes, If you need more time, we can just go and come back later. Nope, I'm good. I'm very good. And she just starts walking over. <laughs> she lets go of her hand <laughs> and starts walking over there by herself. And uh, you catch up just in time as they, they open this door to this, like, uh, dome tower. And uh, they're about to enter. Do you say anything? Dad? And um, the the figure stops. And uh, you can hear <laughs> around the... You hear them saying, whispering, Oh, no. No, 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 no. He just kind of freezes there, and then the the little halfling figure goes, turns around. I believe that girl over there is. Speak up, ma'am. What are you saying? Uh, and she looks back at the group. <laughs> it's a <instant> eating popcorn. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dad, it's 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 me. It's it's Kimmy. Uh, the little halfling looks at this uh, person and says, I, I 
think they're addressing you, or and then he just steps through the door and closes it. I immediately go to the door and I open it up. <laughs> the half leg gets like stumbled over. Oh, oh pardon me, pardon me, and you open it up and it um. You see him just like walking up the staircase. No, 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 no. I go after and I grab him <laughs> by his shoulder. I no, no, no. Maris is like this. I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna grab him and drag his ass back down. <laughs> As go you on. drag him, he, he turns around. He goes like, "Hi, hey, how's it going?" And then uh, he's got like just the most charming face. Like you're kind of stunned uh -oh. by how marvelous he is. <laughs> I'm going to say do a charisma save for me. Okay. Oh me, right. no. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um no no you you get a feeling in your mind that says like he he says very clearly how about you just walk away buddy and then he pats you and you and we see your entire body turn and walk down the stairs you, you, in your mind you're going like oh, no no <laughs> and you like walk out the building and he can we tell going, can we tell what happened <laughs> you do see maris like walking out of the building and he his face he's looks a nice perturbed. guy. God, Jeez, <laughs> yeah. I love him. Uh, it, his baby is he is he within earshot still? Uh, no, he he went inside the building. Like basically, yeah. what happened? Like he was going up the stairs of this tower, and then Maris kind of chased him in, and then he Maris comes out probably like half a minute later. <laughs> uh, give me, uh, I could try something, but uh, I would need your approval first. <laughs> She's just like stunned and she just turns around and she doesn't say anything. She doesn't look at anybody and she just walks out. Like she walks back to the entrance and she just beelines for it. Uh, Ma'am, yep. hold up. <laughs> Please. You can hear yep. the little jingles ching, 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 coming closer that, to you. That's father's for you. She just keeps walking. She's just, she does, she's embarrassed. She's confused. <laughs> she does not want to interact with the situation at all. She's just like, oh, time to leave. <laughs> but it's kind of like her dad, marrying her dad, but like the opposite direction. <laughs> Every single person in the spa is like, oh, it is his dog. <laughs> you hear a lot of people whispering some speaking very loudly like oh Lonnie has a dog what oh. what type of door did he go through like it's like a um like a regular fashion wooden door like single like it just went to like another part of the spa no it's like it's a it's like in its own kind of like garden area that encircles um or that is encircled by the spa itself and there's like a tower that kind of sits in the middle of it Separately from the spa building, like in the middle okay. of it. Wait, has Maris stopped walking or did he walk straight out the building? I think he's like in front of me as we're both walking out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Do I like regain my senses when I get outside or? Uh, you still feel inclined to not move in his direction. Because you fell under a suggestion spell. Wait, let me see, let me see. Yeah, yeah, so you're still under it. What's Lilipa doing right now? <laughs> oh, did, did that halfling guy... He's like, still there. He's like looking at the, the anybody that's stay put. Uh, I'll walk up to him. Uh, 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 what was all that about? <laughs> he he looks at everybody. He's like, I def oh, Lonnie has mm, not mentioned a daughter. But, oh, um. If you, when you see him again, can you tell him that uh, Kimi was here to see him and also uh, his other daughter was here to see him and I'm here for the child support. And then I walk away. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Lilipo, what are you doing? I don't know. It just kind of all happened so fast. I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we walked into a small building. Mm-hmm. 
And he... We walked into a spa building. He was in a hookah lounge area. Yep. And Mm then we... Kimmy tries to contact, like, say, you know, call out to him. And he walks out of the room, which exits the building that we're in, and goes into a nearby building? No, no, no. It's like, uh, the building itself has, like, a little garden, uh, way. Like like a courtyard or something? Yeah, like a a courtyard, yes. Okay, so there's, like, we're on one side of the courtyard, he was, and he went to the other side of the courtyard and, like, exited out of the courtyard into a building. Yeah, like a, a tower that's inside the courtyard itself. Yeah, and then Maris ran into the courtyard and then power walked out of the courtyard and out the building. I, th- I think I think Maris is still in there, like, with you, but he just exited oh, okay. that tower. I think the point is he walked through doors into an area and, like, left and then, like, and, like, he's gone. <laughs> I mean, he's still in the tower. He dipped like a bee in honey. Oh, so he's mm-hmm. still in the tower? He didn't, like, yes. leave, leave? No. I mean, as far as you know, he's still in the tower. Okay, well, Kimmy still, like, left back to the entrance and is outside. But, Lilith, but you're still in the courtyard if you want to go in there yourself. Or if you want to follow Kimmy. Um, Wolf is very cranky right now. <laughs> just mm-hmm. Passing by those Olympic <laughs> that pool was just like oh. <laughs> water. <laughs> just seeing how she she had a feeling that this was gonna happen. Mm-hmm. This feels very on brand <laughs> for Olani, and so. <laughs> She, uh, who's, who's with her still? Anaru's still there. Yeah, Anaru, still there. Sebash. Um. She, uh, looks back at all of you and, uh, this goes. <sighs> Let's go get him real quick. <sighs> I'm sure, I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm sure he won't mind. <laughs> and, uh. Come on, this way. And, uh. She like gets a like claws out and just starts walking towards the door, <laughs> like ready, to, not ready him. to ready to kick it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> you you do kick it open very easily. The door just flies out. The uh, little halfling is screaming, "Oh my door! What are you doing? Don't murder him! He's the show." He... Just want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> just starts like like going up the stairs. <laughs> is, is anybody freaking out after she kicks the door down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can see these people starting to <laughs> scatter. Do, from do the... I see, like, someone that, like, works there? Uh, yeah, you do see a few, uh, like, a few servants. I, I want to go over there, and can I use my bad reputation again, and, like, try to shake them down and be like, listen here, you need you to tell everybody that this is fine. Nothing's wrong. This is business as usual. Just mind your own business. <laughs> This doesn't concern you. It's family it does, shit. <laughs> if, if you if you want to get involved, I'll make you involved right now, buddy. Mm-hmm. Doing a do an intimidation check. <laughs> what is going on? Give me some child support. <laughs> I get this bird some child support. <laughs> intimidation. Yeah. That's seventeen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They they all start nodding along. <laughs> they just drop their little platters of food and just start moseying through the crowd. Just sitting there. Start, Let's move, move! Like they start gesturing towards the the group of people. Like, let's go! Come on! Let's get out of here! It's fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow Lilipus to make sure that we're not wanted for murder after this. <laughs> <laughs> just before you guys make your way uh, up the stairs, we cut away. Uh, Maris, uh, as you're kind of walking out of the building, you can catch Kimmy just kind of fast walking out. Kimmy, uh, yeah, Kimmy. What, what, where are you go? <laughs> where are you go? Why am I outside? She just, she just glances at you, and then she just goes over to the like water fountain that's outside, and she just sits down, and she just kind of like pouts. <laughs> oh, um, I'll come sit by you, close enough that like our arms are touching, but not overbearing. Just, I'll sit there quietly. 
Are you alright? Uh, she, like, she looks like she's fighting back tears, but she's, like, trying her best not to cry, because, <laughs> like, that's embarrassing to her. And she's just like, we came all this way, and I haven't seen him in years, and this was not what, this is not what I pictured to happen, and I'm sure there's a logical explanation for all this. <laughs> Maybe he's nervous. He did seem a little frazzled. I don't, I'm so, I, I don't know why I'm outside and not near him, but I don't feel like I should go back. And, ju and just when you think that that notion of you not coming back ends as we cut away, <laughs> as Lopa and the gang make their way up the stairs, uh, you finally get to the second level and um, you can see on the other side of this room where there's a lot of um, counters and shelves uh, full of um, like smoking utensils and uh, lots of uh, culinary uh, items and such and a table full of um, deliciously cooked food and uh, Olani wearing uh very fine silks and garnets and um having a that's sporting that big grinning smile on the other side he says ah oh no, terion oh wait you're not Tyrion. um is it just him in the room mm -hmm. like with like M miyoko followed right oh. Yeah, I'm holding on to your the back the hem of your shirt and you're just dragging me with zero difficulty. <laughs> My little cape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um if there's nobody else up there, Lilipa's just gonna like rip her hood off <laughs> to have her face be visible. <laughs> and she just goes <clears throat> Hello, Mr. C Singer. <clears throat> And as you kind of tear that off and you look at him a little bit more, you can see that um, he's a slender guy. He's got uh, some dark, curly brown hair. He's got green, bright eyes. And um, and he his eyes widen as he looks at you and he says, Oh! So I wasn't imagining that. I'm afraid you were not. <clears throat> What the hell do you think you are doing? Uh, oh, what? With what exactly do you speak of? The way I see it, you have two choices right now, Mr. Sing Singer. You either go out there right now and you confront Kimmy, your daughter, or I throw you out that window right there. And we'll see if you can fly. Mm -hmm. Do an intimidation. Get a bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nat one. <laughs> <laughs> Him. He boops your snoot. <laughs> Silly fishy. <laughs> yeah, really. The whole time, Miyoko's just like, I, just, I really would hope that you would not kill someone. I really don't want to go to jail. And she's just blabbering. <laughs> He'll land in a pool. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, this water's too hot. You turned it up too high, and then he lands on it, boils alive. <laughs> <laughs> and he's it's dead. okay. It's okay. Nobody will go on this. I'll get it. I'll get it. Rub it up. <laughs> A six. I, Michael, I hate these dice. I would literally <laughs> rather, I would literally rather roll physical dice because I'm so tired of being fucked over by, well, a... <laughs> by Foundry and do you Roll20. Have, do you have physical dice with you right now? I was gonna say you could go ahead and just roll it right now. No, I, uh, we just need the, ammo take, cameras at our. I'll our take dice the stupid rate. six, but like, sorry, I'm, sorry to do this slide, but I just really hate role playing something, and then the dice going fuck you, like I it mean, feels really pointless. Your claws were out. I feel like doesn't she get into like advantage? 
Patrick Rothfuss territory. <laughs> you, are, you are you are surprising him. I'll give it to you. You know, Michael, like, rawr. Rawr. <laughs> <laughs> rawr. <laughs> rawr XD. It's just the uh, men with their extending fingernails from Family Guy. <laughs> rawr. <laughs> Uh, let's do it. Let's do another roll with some rare advantage. Why am I gonna get up and walk away? I promise. <laughs> I mean, I I should have asked. Before. I was thinking about asking before, but I didn't. So I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. That's that better. Guy's healthy. Oh, <laughs> that's better. Hell yeah! Get it. Throw him out a window. <laughs> It's like I'd rather like roll if that's like I tangent. <laughs> it's like okay. I'd rather make the roll first and then role play based off that roll because it just like it just feels like it robs you know. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> right. Um Olani he takes a step back and he says, Look, it's very important that Kimi stays as far away from me as possible. I don't know why she came here, but I sincerely hope it was her only option. <clears throat> what, are you cursed or something? <laughs> Who are you? I am Kimi's manager. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I seriously doubt that. Kimi... Kimi's a scholar of the college... Definitely does Kimi not is one of those, the greatest musicians of this generation. Thank you very much. He just looks perplexed. He's like, I haven't really been catching up with her, but I think I would have heard her play a few times. I would have seen her name. I doubt you would if you keep on avoiding her in this manner. It is very strange and it is very rude. Look, I have a big target on me. You can't make me go see her. You have to understand. And why not? She hired eight bodyguards to come here. She is perfectly safe. He just kind of looks at a little pun. Why, why now? Why after all this time? We have been sent here to find you. <laughs> Target or not, I do not care. You need to talk to her. It takes a deep breath. I'll do it. Right now. Like, she steps aside. Stares her right there. <laughs> And he, he slowly makes his way closer and closer. Can you put those away? And he looks at your claws. <laughs> and, uh, if he's like stepping like out, she's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he steps out of the, the tower eventually. And. Um, the crowds have been dispersed, and Sebastian, you do see him uh, being followed by uh, Lilipa and Miyoko. Uh, oh, Lilipa's put up before we go out. Mm -hmm. Shlorp. <laughs> Shlorp. <laughs> uh, he, he nods at you. He says, I take it you're with the, uh, the group. Is he talking to me? Mm hmm. I have my, like, I'm, like, doing the whole, like, I'm pushing the coat back and, like, showing, like, the gun is, like, in my, like, hip. Ah. And I'm like, hi. I have a, I have the bad feeling about all of this. Yeah, he looks over and sees an Aru. A Tethian. <laughs> This is all making sense now. And he, he starts to like get darty eyes. 
would prefer to have a private conversation with her, I can fetch her. I would prefer that. Yes. Very well. And Anaru will just walk out and track down where they went. And uh, we cut back to that uh, that fountain area where Kimmy and Maris are. And you're still conversing with each other. Sorry that she uh, walked away, Kimmy. I honestly have no idea why. Kimmy, like, start, like, she stands up and she just starts pacing back and forth in front of you. Like, she's just, like, lost in thought and just she's like mumbling to herself but you can't really like, understand because she's just like I don't know what to do like I don't get it like, I don't know. and then he's like over there and then it's like are you going to be okay if you want to try to see him again she stops and she just goes I mean if you wanted to see me but if he if he doesn't and I should just respect that, and... I mean, do you yeah. want my... Do you want my opinion? She just looks at you. You deserve... To be wanted to be seen. You deserve... A father who doesn't walk away, and... I think this is a time where you need to make sure... That he knows that. That he owes it to you. Her eyebrows, like, frow, and she's just, like, you just see a side of her that you don't normally see, and she goes, you don't understand, you don't know my father, and don't act like he do. And just what? when that happens, Anaru comes into the shot. Well, we've, uh, persuaded him to have an audience with you. Persuaded him? You didn't throw a link, you know. Well, there was a window, and Lilipa was angry. You know the rest. Oh, no, He's no. ready for you if you are. Uh, okay. Just follows behind you. Yeah. yeah. I'll lead her back in. And uh, past the inside of the building, past all the spas and the little hook of places, you eventually go back into that courtyard where, uh, surrounded by Lilipa, Miyoko, and Sebastian, is uh, the dark, curly haired, green eyed father of yours, a lot of sea singer. And he's not looking at your eyes, he's just kind of has his hands in his pocket. It's kind of like looking around and kind of half smiling. Uh, you wanted to speak with me? Hey, hey looks over at Lilipa. I... <laughs> 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 he looks up at you. And finally, you lock eyes with your father. Hey, you see, like, instantaneously, like, like a lot of pain in his eyes. And he says, It's been some time, Kimmy. I missed you. She just, like, steps forward. A little bit and she's kind of hesitant because she doesn't want to like you know upset anybody <laughs> um and she goes well i missed you too dad i mean i'm sure you know you had your reasons and but it doesn't matter anymore you know because we're here right now and i don't care about you know, anything that's happening because the truth is like, you're my dad and I'm your daughter and I forgive you. Why are you even here? Oh, um, well, you know, Professor Helio sent me, but I also, Hel I wanted to come too, you know. Hel 
You're working under Helios. Look, we can talk about that later, okay? I just want to, like, how, how are things? Like, how are the concert, the tours? No, What's well, going he send on you? here? Did he send you here? Uh. Yes. That bastard. Well, and he can why? see him, like, getting up in energy and kind of moving around. He sends my daughter here right into the belly of the beast. I'm an asshole. Well, he sent me here for a reason, and just so you know, I graduated bard school, so, like, why wouldn't he send me here? He send you to... right here into Federation-occupied territory? Does he not realize the danger he's put you in? Um, I think you're the one that kind of put the this situation together, because you're here, and I need to talk with you, and I haven't seen you in years! Amy. I have, I have important things to do. I have shows to do. I cannot. And you can see he like he looks off, like to the side. I, I can't be bothered with this. I'm have... s I'm sorry. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I know that you have a lot of important things going on, and I'm not trying to upset you. But the college, it, it's in danger, and. And I know that he sent me here, but also I do think that we could really use your help. And she oh, like, she... oh, sorry. You go ahead. And she like tries to like go like grab his hand to like be like it's gonna be okay, you know. Yeah, he pulls back and takes a step backward, <laughs> and he's like looking off, and he says. You don't realize what you're doing. I cannot help the college any more than it can itself. Helios can take care of it. Him and those others. They've done fine without me. Okay. You have done fine without me. I did fine because, but I could have done better, you know? And look. Maybe you can explain to me, you know, why why it's so dangerous here, or why, you know, you can't go back, you know? Just at least explain it to me so I can understand, and I don't have to tell, like, Helios, you know? I just need to understand. If I told you, it would put you in danger, in college in danger. Just need to realize to stay away from me, Kimmy. Put the college in danger. But the college is already in danger. That's what they call that danger. No, there's far more prevalent things happening in the world than whatever Helios conjures up in his overcalculated mind. I don't understand. You know the the person that I met or that I knew years ago, the person that was my father and left for important business is not the person that's standing in front of me right now. He, he does like a... He kind of crosses his arms and says, I don't... I don't mean to do this, but I have to. Don't follow me, Kimmy. And then he takes a step backwards and a portal opens up and he looks at you in the eyes one last time. Don't come to the tournament. Leave like a shell. Save yourself. And then the portal. So we're like going to the tournament now, right? She's just, like, frozen in place, like, staring at where the portal was, and, like, you just see, like, tears forming in her eyes, but, like, she's still trying to hold him back, like, no, no, no. <laughs> you hear the jingling of shoes as a little halfling guy comes up. 
Wow, he's quite the asshole. He's a Tyrion of a Tyrion spells. May I offer you a spa in this troubling time? I think we will take you up on that offer, as well as any information you might have on what has that man so spooked. Yes, I can tell you a little bit more. Follow me. And um, he leads you off from the courtyard. And that's where we're going to end our tonight's episode. Or a downer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Made your sad, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> yeah, well, season two, The Feels. <laughs> <laughs> we're going hard. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you had a great time feeling sad and down. We love you, though. It's going to get better. Don't worry. Lots of good times ahead. Fun times as we explore more of Lock of Shell with this wonderful cast of mine. And uh, thanks for watching. But don't go away yet, because there's more. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> as you can see, we have new special layouts. Today's our anniversary of our first stream here at Lich's Lair. So, one year in, everybody. Woo! I uh, just want to thank all the subscribers and all the followers and everyone that cheered bits throughout the entire year and being here and supporting us and being in the chat or, you know, hanging out, just watching, just special thank you to everybody involved in making this place possible. Um, new things on the horizon. Uh, first of all, uh... Toby, you want to take it away about Toby Tuesdays? They're dead. I, sh I shot. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> You're gone. And then took the corpse to a new channel and resurrected it. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God, I still hate saying the name <laughs> out loud. But, uh... Toby Tuesdays will now be officially on my own little channel called Tuberculosis because <laughs> uh, fuck you, it's funny. <laughs> it's so funny. Never. But, um, and, uh, we will be back Cass and I will be back this upcoming Tuesday, technically Wednesday, 1am, but it's Tuesday in California still. <laughs> and, uh, I'm playing some Frog Detective because I just need a, a nice chill game <laughs> about frogs being a detective. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. And I find out why they croaked. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I said chill game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also had the movie nights every Sunday. This Sunday, uh, are we still gonna try to watch Never Ending Story? Remain. So, that's going to be, it's making a change. So, shortly soon, uh, there'll be a, another channel. That's what we're going to down in rats for a little bit longer Ooh. while I figure out some things. But Movie Nights is making a little bit of change. We're going to we're gonna try to add maybe some movie trivia, some discussion of movies. I'm going to go all in. Uh, but we are uh, making some changes. Hell yeah. Nights. And it and I have a new channel coming um, every Friday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Time. I'm going to play some chill, like, come and wake up with me games. So I think I'm going to start off with some Animal Crossing and just some fun, you know, <laughs> relaxing games. And uh, also we have some new content coming out. We're trying to work on channel trailers and meet the players videos so stick around if you haven't already join our discord that's where we have a lot of content and things going on all the time and we're always hanging out there because we have that's our sanctuary <laughs> <laughs> uh is there any other special announcements anybody wants to make before we end it 
Stay tuned for our Cyberpunk Red Campaign podcast. It's coming up close. It's going to be fun, gritty, all that good stuff. So watch out for that. Excited. And um, Jojo, are we still on, still doing the thing afterwards, after this? Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you want, <laughs> uh, in about 30-ish minutes, we're going to go live and just do a, just chatting. I'll do some live stream of me editing Meet the Player videos and come ask questions about season time or just ask questions about us in general if anybody wants to hang out. We'll be doing that for about an hour or so, so stick around for that. That's it. <laughs> and happy Thanks anniversary, again, everyone. Really <laughs> happy anniversary, y'all. Yay! One Yay. Year. It's the paper anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh...